Hi, I'm Jack Atherton, and today I'm going to be talking about using the design philosophy of artful design to inform and guide designers working toward the goals of the positive design framework. I'm going to be discussing both design philosophies, and will use a case study to illuminate how they can be connected. The case study is a virtual reality experience that was designed in the context of design principles of artful design, and aligns well with the core tenets of positive design. So, positive design is a design framework that may be more familiar to some of you. It addresses how to improve people's subjective well-being. Working towards subjective well-being in this framework has three main components, design for pleasure, or increasing positive affect, design for personal significance, or setting and achieving personally meaningful goals, and design for virtue, or acting with morality and according to commonly held societal values. The framework also stresses the importance of people being actively involved in realizing their own human flourishing. Now, artful design is a design philosophy that covers how to shape technology with craft, ethics, and aesthetics. The philosophy originates in years of theory and practice within the music technology academic community, but its central tenets are broadly applicable to anyone working to develop technology to be used for social good and human flourishing. So, artful design is not about creating art. Instead, it's about shaping technology to transcend the functional and be artful, which means addressing self-actualization, human flourishing, and articulations of a deep understanding of humanity and the sublime. Artful design invokes a lot of aspirational, abstract concepts, but it also delivers highly pragmatic advice through design principles, which are aphorisms that can be invoked or kept in mind as a lens to guide thinking during the process of design. These lenses can be applied by designers where they are contextually appropriate to a broad variety of design processes and methods. I'll be discussing more of artful design throughout the presentation. So, the case study that I'll talk about today is called 12 Sentiments for VR. It's an extended virtual reality experience where users explore the emotional life cycle of a plant by making music in 12 different phases of its life, each seeded by a new emotional aesthetic. It has an emphasis not only on doing or taking actions, but on being, which is intentional and active reflection and stillness. Here's a demonstration of someone learning to catch sunlight on their leaves, which represent their hands. Each action they take has musical and narrative consequences. Twelve Sentiments for VR was designed using a process of artful design, but the end result aligns well with many of the goals of positive design. That's why I'll be using this case study to show how artful design's perspective can help to reach the goals of positive design. During this presentation, I'll give an example that shows how artful design can inform each of these aspects of positive design. I'll do this by showing how Artful Design motivated the case study and how the case study aligns with positive design, then concluding with what this might help us understand about how to approach the goals of positive design using some of the principles of Artful Design. I'll give one example for each of the broad tenets of positive design. If you're interested, there's much more ground covered in the paper. I'll first talk about active participation. Some of the relevant principles of Artful Design include the value of encouraging amateurs to engage with music, and the support of human flourishing specifically by enabling active user participation in musical experiences. Especially when working with amateurs, it can help to design experiences to lower inhibition to make them more comfortable with actively participating, and keeping the human in the loop, or remembering that what we do with technology can often be fundamentally improved by placing human intentionality, knowledge, and instinct within the designed system. So, in 12 Sentiments for VR, we made sure that the user has an active input that enables them to shape the music of each scene in a way that's approachable for an amateur. For example, in the second movement, there's the interaction of moving your hands, represented as leaves, into rays of light. This relies on tacit embodied knowledge, and so is quick for users to explore without inhibition, allowing them personal control over how the music and the scene unfolds. Specifically, the user grows as they capture more sunlight, and the way that they capture sunlight affects what chords are played and the textural density of the music. So, perhaps the takeaway here is that Artful Design's focus on supporting creative self-expression is a powerful, enjoyable, and meaningful way for people to play an active role in cultivating their own human flourishing. Now, I'll talk about design for pleasure. One of the many core tenets of Artful Design is this idea that aesthetics are active agents in the design process. You can use a particular aesthetic you have in mind, such as roundness, improvisation, melancholy, or connection with familiar strangers, to motivate design decisions. You can choose to design toward aesthetics on many levels, from material and structural to interactive, emotional, social, and moral ethical. 
The focus that may be the most helpful when working toward design for pleasure is the emotional psychological focus, which considers emotional engagement, meaning, poetry, and pathos. It's exactly this focus that was the driving force behind the aesthetic-driven design process we followed for 12 Sentiments for VR. This project used a different emotional aesthetic, such as calm, lightness, unsure, melancholy, or joyful, to motivate any ambiguous design decisions throughout each movement. Notably, these are not all positive emotions, such as bleak, frenetic, and melancholy. These more uncomfortable emotions serve the purpose to help users feel validated and to feel empathy with those emotions, but also to serve as a contrast so that the more positive, pleasurable emotions feel more real and meaningful. Overall, this journey of emotions reflects a broader range of human experience than only positive emotions. So here, when you design for emotional aesthetics, you can more acutely enable the experience of positive affect. You can also heighten the contrast of this positive affect if you design for other kinds of emotional experiences as well. Now I'll move to design for virtue. Another level of aesthetic-driven design is the moral ethical dimension. Like all the dimensions artful design considers, this dimension is necessary for something we create to be beautiful. If a thing is unjust, no matter how clever, pretty, or social it is, then it is not artful, aesthetic, or beautiful. Artful design puts justice and beauty in an equivalence class. So, the moral ethical level of aesthetics addresses the humanist dimension. It asks, does the design do good? And considers ethos, the conscience of design, and ensuring that design is driven by virtues, what we consider good in society. Much of artful design is about addressing and cultivating values that it considers virtuous. Some examples of the many virtues it promotes are that technology should create calm, that bodies matter and that embodied interfaces feel more like extensions of our intentions, and that play enables us to be free and that playful self-expression does a body good. The virtues of calm, embodiment, and play were core inspirations for the experience design of 12 Sentiments. Embodiment is of particular importance in VR, since the medium allows people to feel as if a virtual body were their own. We use this affordance to approach the virtues of curiosity, as users explore new worlds and what it means to embody different beings, like plants, winds, and earth, as well as the virtue of perspective, since they can see the world from the perspective of many kinds of beings and through the perspective of a community of plants instead of just a single individual. Emphasizing musical play led us to resonate with the virtue of creativity, as users actively construct the world and the music itself through play, creating a personal song and narrative. And, our emphasis on making space for users to practice calm, intentional, contemplative reflection and stillness does much to promote the virtue that some call spirituality or transcendence. We know that design for virtue, working toward virtues that are not just subjectively held by one individual but valued morally by a broader segment of society, is a core aspect of positive design. The virtues of curiosity, perspective, creativity, and contemplative reflection are all components of the broader virtues of wisdom and transcendence, which come from the taxonomy of virtues proposed by Peterson and Seligman in 2004. It's nearly impossible to propose a definitive list of virtues that will resonate globally, but their list is quite thorough in general, and is cited as a promising source of virtues in the 2017 Positive Design paper. So, where artful design can be helpful here is its emphasis on calm, embodiment, and play, in working toward helping people practice wisdom and transcendence. I've only scratched the surface with this analysis. Many more of the core ideas emphasized in artful design connect meaningfully with other commonly held virtues. Now, design for personal significance. So, one of the major tenets of artful design is that it's not just about addressing basic needs, but addressing the human values behind them, and about meeting higher-level invisible needs. People can grow and fulfill their potential by meeting these invisible needs, which include the needs for esteem, cognitive challenges, appreciation of aesthetics, self-actualization, and transcendence through encounters with the sublime. So, the invisible needs that 12 Sentiments primarily addresses are cognitive needs, or mental stimulation through exploration and creativity, and aesthetic needs, the need to appreciate harmony and beauty. We've tried to create environments where people can express themselves creatively and appreciate beauty. And so the takeaway here is that meeting these invisible needs can cultivate personal growth. In positive design, 
Design for personal significance is usually talked about in terms of setting and meeting personally meaningful goals in order to achieve personal growth. And I would suggest that we can broaden this tenet of design for personal significance by including meeting these invisible needs, and not only the scaffolding of explicit personal goals. This could really help us to design for personal significance in situations where personal goals aren't relevant or possible, such as in the context of amateur creativity. And now I'd like to talk briefly about some possible future work. I'd really like to meet in the middle between artful design and positive design on the subject of human flourishing via amateur design practice, meaning people improving their subjective well-being by practicing design themselves in an amateur capacity. The editorial on subjective well-being from the 2018 Design Research Society meeting suggested that academic focus is starting to shift toward the study of how the act of designing itself can contribute to a meaningful experience and improve subjective well-being. And Artful Design has much to say about this as well. It has principles that say, we design as an act of play, and that we engage with aesthetics as a form of self-emancipation. So I'm proposing this new term called folk design to mean design practiced by amateurs in the context of and for the benefit of their own social context. It's a parallel term of this term folk art from Rich Gold's book, The Plenitude. He defines folk art as often ephemeral art produced often by amateurs for their own pleasure and to be enjoyed mostly by their own community. For example, someone who paints watercolors on the weekends or has a band in their garage with their friends. This is in contrast to high art, which is where a professional artist expresses a pure inner vision or pop art, where someone makes millions of copies of something with mass appeal. And so folk design is very similar to folk art, meaning you're practicing design for your own benefit and for the benefit of your community, working toward your own subjective well-being and human flourishing. And so when folk design is done artfully, I think it can be really powerful for positive design. Compared to folk art, which is often more ephemeral or decorative, folk design can result in beautifully crafted objects that live on functionally or interactively in the designer's daily life. These objects can act as a reminder of prior achievements and motivate folk designers to plan future ones in a perfect storm of positive affect, reinforcing the achievement of personal goals, and promoting the virtues of creativity, curiosity, open-mindedness, love of learning, perspective, persistence, appreciation of beauty and excellence, and more. For a quick example, if you design a chair for yourself and you're only concerned with the functionality of the chair, you might nail a bunch of 2x4s together and have something you can sit on very quickly. Compare this to taking the time to artfully handcraft a rocking chair with curved rails, ornate armrests, and an elegant sloping back. That chair is much more likely to be something that when you encounter it every day, it fills you with a sense of beauty and accomplishment, and inspires you to want to keep working at the craft of woodworking. So, to remind you of what I talked about today, I have focused on the parallels between artful design and positive design to demonstrate how many of the design principles of artful design are useful to consider when you're working toward the goals of positive design. Both of these design philosophies are fundamentally about improving human flourishing. They both agree that the design process should be motivated from the start by higher level goals and values. Positive design calls this a top-down approach, whereas artful design is more likely to call it designing backwards or inside out, since you work backwards from your desired end state of how you want someone to live with what you create. For artful design, this is accomplished through its focuses on aesthetics and invisible human needs, as well as through the humanistic values that it considers virtuous. Artful Design's principles for interaction design, inhibition, and social connection can help people become active contributors to their own flourishing. Its focus on aesthetic-driven design can inform design for pleasure via emotional aesthetics and design for virtue by considering moral ethical aesthetics. Finally, addressing invisible needs through our designs might broaden our approach to designing for personal significance in a way that helps people grow and fulfill their potential. In conclusion, I hope to see more cross-pollination between these two communities in the future, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for listening.